Hey guys, Brian from Brian Boas here. I had my first litter of the season, a early surprise litter of Pearl Island or Saboge Boas a few weeks ago. Today I'm going to give you guys an update on how the litter is doing and show you some close-ups of the babies. So be sure to stay tuned. So as you may know, this litter was actually born, or I discovered it on April 1st, April Fool's Day. I'm pretty sure they were born on the 31st though, since they were already, you know, at least 12 or so hours old when I discovered them. And this litter was an early surprise because a shed that I didn't think was the post-ovulation shed because it was so early actually ended up being the post-ovulation shed. But it was a nice surprise and I had a litter of six baby Pearl Island uh, boas. In fact, the previous year in 2021, I had an early litter also of Pearl Island boas. Uh, so these guys are definitely one of my first breeders in the season. And so I thought I'd pull out the male first, you know, the father of the litter to show you guys before we look at the babies. So this guy is a seven year old Pearl Island boa from uh, Cutting Edge Reptile. And beautiful animal, you can see mostly patternless, beautiful golden brown color. He's got this beautiful iridescent sheen to him. I just love the, the look of the scales on these guys. It's just got this beautiful kind of pearly uh, iridescence to it. You can also see how light his sides are and he's got quite a bit of uh, white scales. These Pearl Island boas have just a kind of a hypomelanistic look with even lighter sides. And as you can see he's quite active. He never sit still. The Pearl Island boas are definitely one of the most active locality boas, if not the most. They're adapted to a life in the trees where they hunt for birds and mammals and other prey uh, that live in the trees. So they don't really hold still very much. This guy is actually pretty docile though. You know, some of them can be a little nippy, but as you can see, this guy is pretty docile, pretty laid back. He just, you know, moves around a lot. You can also see how long and slender they are. They're probably the longest and most slender boas with a body plan more similar to like a carpet python or reticulated python, something like that, uh, just because they're adapted to a life in the trees. One of the other things I really like about these Pearl Island boas is how cool their head shape is. They've got kind of this flattened, elongated head shape with these flared nostrils. And the eyes are really big and kind of stick out. Sometimes the eyes can be an orange or a golden color, uh, but just a really cool head shape. In fact, I would say that these boas might be one of the most divergent or you know unique looking locality boas. In fact, when they were originally classified, they weren't even considered boa constrictor. They were put in a different genus, the Epicrides genus, along with the rainbow boas. That's just how unusual they are. They're actually reclassified as a subspecies of boa constrictor. Uh, you know, at the turn of, or around the mid 20th century. And recently they've been reclassified as a subspecies of Boa Imperator, Boa Imperator Sobogae. Although a lot of people are still calling them Boa Constrictor Sobogae. So you can call them whatever you want. They probably aren't gonna know the difference anyway. The snakes don't really care what we call them. It's all for just the humans. So with that said, let's take a look at some of the babies. So here's one of the baby Sabogay boas. These guys are now about two weeks old. And they shed about a week or so after they were born. I put them in their separate tubs. I actually tried feeding them about two days after they shed, although none of them fed. So sometimes they just have to kind of absorb the remains of the yolk before they get hungry. So we'll try again probably in another few days. I think these baby Sabogay boas are some of the most beautiful animals they almost look fake like they're made of plastic or something almost like clay and you can see much to their reputation this little one isn't holding still look at those tail blotches really nice looking animal with those blotches and you can see very reduced saddles over most of its body and the characteristic head shape with the kind of long flattened past, uh, front of the head and flared nostrils but you know he's not really holding still so it's not easy to film him with this camera probably going out of focus here's another one of the litter and overall these Pearl Island boas typically look pretty similar as babies there's not a huge amount of variety I'd say that you know some of them are a little bit darker or a little bit lighter and maybe the blotches are a little bit bigger or smaller 
but overall I haven't seen nearly the variety I've seen like in my red tail boas or my long tail boas or some of the other locality boas but all really nice looking and they're really big too for especially for island boas these babies are probably about 20 21 inches long not quite as big as the red tails but definitely bigger than the dwarf boas and most of my other locality boas and here's one more of the baby Pearl Island boas. This guy's overall, again, fairly similar. He's looking a little bit darker than the other two. And individual animals can actually change color quite a bit, you know, similar to the Hog Island and some other island boas. Well, he's really taken off there. One really cool thing is that these animals will have a tongue that's kind of got a black tip, but their tongue is mostly pink. I don't know if uh, you can see that there. He's not really sticking his tongue out all the way. But it's a really cute look in these Pearl Island boas with their two colored tongues. And I think it by the time they're adults, it pretty much goes away. If you saw my video that I released a couple weeks ago about the birth of this litter, you may remember that I had one animal that had some really bad kinking in its spine. And unfortunately this animal didn't make it passed away a few days later so I don't know for sure but it's probably pretty likely that there was something internal going on that resulted in his demise and this is you know certainly sad but unfortunately it's just a part of breeding boas that sometimes you have you know one or two animals that don't survive in a particular litter they're just you know not destined to last long uh, I thought I would end by showing you this animal this is a holdback Sabogia boa from 2019 that's a beautiful golden light colored female. And so this animal, what is she, probably about three and a half, four feet long, real slender. Just a beautiful animal to look at. You can see those light sides. This one is actually a half sibling to the litter I just had. This one has the same father, the animal I showed you at the beginning of the video, and a different mother uh, who came from Rich Isle of the Salmon Boa. Just real cool animal. I don't think a lot of people keep these. They're not one of the more popular locality boas, but definitely cool for somebody that, who wants something different. And so I would expect that my babies from 2022 will go on sale sometime in about a month and a half or so. I just need to get them feeding and established before they're ready to go. Actually, I do have a couple males left from my litter in 2021. And these are really well started animals that are now almost a year old and these guys are going to be available fairly soon so stay tuned i expect to release a video in the near future discussing some of my available animals from 2021. so i hope you enjoyed this look at these beautiful Sabogay pearl island boas uh, if you have any questions feel free to shoot me a line thanks for watching and enjoy your boas